Implanting a Neuralink chip into the brains of volunteers, the world's first factory for the production of humanoid robots, a large behavioral model for robots similar to GPT, test of devices for carrying babies, a giant robotic mech, and new threats of artificial intelligence. This and other technological news for the entire month of September in one video. Soon we will finally see the results of implanting the Neuralink chip into the human brain. The company has started selecting the first patients, who must be over 22 years old and suffer from forelimb paralysis or amyotrophic lateral sclerosis. Having a full-time caregiver is also an important criterion. The clinical trial, called PRIME, has three goals. The first is to test the implant itself, called N1. The second goal is to test the R1 surgical robot, which is specifically designed to implant the chip. And the third is to test the neural interface application that recognizes and decodes brain signals. The point of the trial is to help paralyzed people regain control of their limbs using computers and other devices. Voluntary participants in the prime experiment will have to first meet with scientists nine times over 18 months, and then spend at least two hours a week at sessions to study the neural interface. After that, there are more than 20 visits to doctors over the next five years. During the trials, all incidental expenses, such as travel to the research center, will be reimbursed to the volunteers by Neuralink. In the meantime, against the backdrop of this news, the investigation against the company over the suspected deaths of some 1,500 test animals and improper disposal of biological waste is once again being widely discussed online. The unpleasant news for all Musk fans is that the second launch of Starship may be postponed for months, and it's all because of officials. The FWS, or Fish and Wildlife Service, hasn't started the official review, which can take anywhere from 30 to 135 days. And the FAA, the Federal Aviation Administration, won't issue a launch license until the FWS inspection is complete. Recall that the inspection is necessary because of the change the company made after the first failed launch. SpaceX changed the system of remote flight abort and made about a thousand more changes than the device of the ship and upper stage. In addition, the company took measures to prevent repeated destruction in the launch area. Steel plates were secured on the launch pad, under which a liquid cooling system was placed. It's done pretty well during tests so far. Powerful water pressure perfectly dampens the fire impact from the work of 33 Raptor engines. Now the FWS must evaluate how it will affect the environment, but is in no hurry to do anything about it. Similarly, officials have also delayed Starship's first launch. In other news, Elon Musk has a new biography out, and it spotlights a robo-auto concept. Now fans are wondering if it's an early prototype of the Cybertruck or a new robotaxi concept. The two-door and seemingly two-seat electric compact car is possibly made of stainless steel, and from the biography, we know that Musk, despite the resistance of engineers, insisted that the robotaxi does not have a steering wheel and pedals. On the initial concept, these details are completely absent. Earlier, Musk has already announced that two new models will be in the Tesla lineup. One should be an electric car with a price of only $25,000, and the second should be some form of robotaxi. It was also mentioned that the design of the new autos could be closer to the Cybertruck than to the Tesla's earlier model. Musk also told Tesla's board of directors that he is taking on all the risk of designing and producing autos without steering wheels and pedals. He stated, we're betting everything on autonomy. In his conversation with his biographer, Isaacson, the entrepreneur said this product is what will make Tesla a $10 trillion company. People will be talking about this moment for a hundred years from now, said the Tesla CEO. What do you think? Is Musk a genius visionary or is he dreaming too big? In the issue down in the link, we talked about what humanity will be like in 2050 and mentioned baby factories in particular. Now the first step towards them is about to be taken. So doctors in the United States are preparing to test the very artificial uterus for carrying children. So far, the technology is not able to ensure carrying children from conception to birth but should increase the chances of healthy development for premature babies born between 22 and 28 weeks. As conceived, premature babies should be placed in a bio bag that's filled with electrolytes that mimic amniotic fluid. The blood vessels of the umbilical cord are connected to a system that provides oxygen to the blood. Trials on lambs have been successful. Now researchers at Children's Hospital of Philadelphia are seeking approval for the first human clinical trials.
Agility Robotics has announced the construction of the world's first humanoid robot factory. The 6,500 square meter factory will be located in Oregon and will be able to produce about 10,000 units of digits humanoid robots per year. Moreover, it's assumed that the robots will come off the assembly line and will work together with humans in the same factory. I wonder where the other thousands of robots will go though. RoboFab will be completed this year and the first delivery of robots to customers will begin in 2024. That being said, the robot won't enter the general market until 2025. In the first year, the company plans to produce about 100 robots and then increase production to 10,000. Recall that Digit is a bipedal and two-armed robot with a height of about 175 centimeters and a weight of about 65 kilograms. It can carry loads weighing up to 16 kilograms and hands gripped with new grippers, autonomously go to charge and work 16-hour days, which is equivalent to two full-time shifts. The leg design allows the robot to squat low and maintain its balance while lifting heavy objects. Also, when pushed hard, the robot will simply take a big step backward to keep its balance. Digit has LiDAR, and its head is also designed to provide visibility to communicate with the user. The robot can be hard programmed to perform various tasks and can also be controlled from a tablet. However, engineers are now actively experimenting with using artificial intelligence and large language models to get the robot to program itself in response to verbal commands in natural language. Interestingly, another company, Chinese startup Fourier Intelligence, has promised to deliver 100 humanoid robots to customers this year. Their GT1 robot is still more of a research robot, but it also claims to be a universal worker in the future. All in all, the trend of replacing labor with robots is in full view. Another robot revolution is being planned by Toyota. Its new approach to training robots with artificial intelligence in the real world can help robots master any task in a matter of hours. And it's really incredible, as it could make all those humanoid robots that a dozen companies, including Tesla, are about to release really smart and useful. This feels like a ChatGPT moment for robotics. A new learning system unveiled by scientists at the Toyota Research Institute allows robots to solve a number of complex tasks with two hands using common human tools. Essentially, where large language models such as ChatGPT can assimilate billions of human written words and learn to write and code at a level remarkably close to a human, the new learning method allows AI robots to observe how a human performs a given physical task in the real world and then essentially program themselves to flexibly perform the task. The training is based on the operator receiving haptic feedback from the robot's soft grippers, allowing them to feel what the robot feels when its arm makes contact with an object. Once a human operator shows the robot how to perform a task several times under slightly different conditions, the robot's AI builds its own internal model of what success and failure looks like and then runs thousands of similar processes into the simulation to determine for itself how to perform such work. So far, the team has used this approach to quickly train the bots on more than 60 small tasks. Toyota also says it will have hundreds of tasks under its control by the end of the year, and it plans to have more than 1,000 tasks under its control by 2024. So the company is developing what it believes will be the first large behavioral model that will eventually expand to become something like the embodied robotic equivalent of ChatGPT. Humanoid robots, it seems, will soon populate the entire planet. Aptronic has introduced another one to the public. Meet Apollo, a cute and friendly looking robot that aims to drive humans out of the labor market. Aww. The robot is 173 centimeters tall and weighs 73 kilograms and can run up for four hours on a single replaceable battery. It can also carry loads weighing up to 25 kilograms, which is 25% more than the already announced warehouse and enterprise robots from Tesla and Figure. The robot is safe to work around people and can come in a variety of configurations, as a full-size humanoid, as an upper torso with arms mounted on a cart, or as a stationary torso version that can be plugged into a power source at the workplace. Apollo is sharpened for crate work, specifically loading and unloading vans, carts, pallets, and shelves. But in the future, the company expects to expand its use to any human task. Basically, it's the same stuff we've heard many times before from other developers. That said, Aptronic has a goal to create a production version by the end of 2024 and make the robot commercial by 2025. But that's not all. It was recently revealed that Apollo is going to the moon. Not that it's going right now, but developers at Aptronic are working with NASA to customize its space missions. Apparently to show what the space agency expects from the robot, Aptronic engineers were shown the Valkyrie robot, a humanoid bot that has been in development for years specifically for NASA, but has never undergone any serious testing. Apollo, on the other hand, is supposed to be an assistant to the astronauts, living either on the space stations or in orbit or bases on the moon or Mars. At this time, no further details are available. From what is known, 
NASA wants to expand the robot's autonomy and maneuverability. Do you think the humanoid form is relevant for space stations? Google DeepMind co-founder and AI field pioneer Mustafa Suleiman has spoken aloud what many people have been thinking, that the development and availability of artificial intelligence could have serious consequences. Specifically, he said, there's a risk that the engineered synthetic pathogens could be accidentally or deliberately designed to be more infectious. Viruses modified with AI could spread faster and be more deadly. Suleiman emphasizes that working with such technologies requires limited access and calls for the adoption of deterrence strategy against AI, similar to what NATO applies to the nuclear weapons. The former top Google executive who founded the new company Inflection AI made his stance clear at the AI summit in Washington, D.C., which was also addressed by industry leaders including Simon Altman, Mark Zuckerberg, Elon Musk, and Bill Gates. Details about the summit are still scarce, but it's reported that Musk raised questions about the existential risk associated with AI. Zuckerberg raised the issue of closed and open source models of AI and Gates talked about how AI could be used to feed the hungry. IBM CEO Arvind Krishna disagreed with the other company's proposals requiring license. Overall, almost everyone agreed that regulation is necessary, but how to implement it is still an open question. Deep Robotics unveiled its humanoid bot for the first time at a robot exhibition in China. Unfortunately, nothing is known about the bot yet except the name, Wukong 4, which hints that there are at least three more previous versions of the robot in Deep Robotics labs. Judging by the lack of data, the robot is still in the early stages of development and can't boast of anything yet. Its existence only proves that the trend for humanoids continues to gain momentum. By the way, you can watch the full review of the robot exhibit in the link down below. Engineers at the Korea Institute of Advanced Science and Technology have unveiled the world's first humanoid robot pilot with artificial intelligence, PiBot. It can be placed in the pilot seat without modifying the cockpit of an airplane and launched into independent flight. The robot can both operate by hand with all the switches and memorize flight charts from around the world and emergency protocols. This should allow PiBot, equipped with ChatGPT technology and camera, to analyze the situation inside the cockpit, to fly without errors, and react to different situations faster than human pilots. By the way, with the help of a camera, the RoboPilot also analyzes the environment outside the cockpit. We're waiting for the first real flight of PiBot, which they plan to start selling to civilians and military in 2025. Who would you trust more, a live pilot or a robot? <laughs> Obviously a live pilot, I'm not insane. <laughs> Japanese company Tsubame Deuce has unveiled a four and a half meter tall robot called Arcax, which you can buy yourself for only $2.7 million. The machine is controlled by a human and can operate in two modes. In robot mode, when you can control all the moving parts of the bot, and in car mode, when Arcax assumes a more stable posture, could drive quite sharply. The 3.5 ton robot is made of iron and aluminum alloy and is powered by an electric car battery. Like a car, it has front steering and rear wheel drive and can move at two kilometers an hour in robot mode and 10 kilometers an hour in car mode. The pilot controls the robot from the cockpit using joysticks, pedals, and a touchpad. There are a total of four monitors and nine cameras in the robot's body. The robot can also be controlled remotely. The joints of Arcax's entire body have 26 degrees of freedom, and in addition, there are rocking suspensions on the front and rear wheels. The robot's arms are quite functional and can hold objects weighing up to 15 kilograms. The creators are counting on super rich buyers from abroad and plan to produce at least five robots. What other uses do you think a machine could have besides robot fights? It's no secret that China plans everything in advance, the economy, political strategy, and now the exploration of the solar system. Yes, the celestial empire seems to have big plans for it. Thus, the strategy includes a program for the use of space resources, covering not only the nearest regions of space, but also the furthest fringes. All stages of creating a large-scale infrastructure are described in detail. Mining and processing station, transportation routes, and service complexes. All this isn't planned to be created until 2100, the first of four stages of the program provides the construction of water ice mining stations on the moon, where it will be used to make rocket fuel. Thus, the moon will become a transfer point on the way to asteroids, Mars, and natural satellites of Jupiter. The authors propose to locate the distribution nodes in the Lagrange points between the Earth and the moon, the sun and the Earth, and the sun and Jupiter. The U.S. is preparing an army of autonomous robots to confront China. 
This is reported by New Atlas. In the next two years, the Pentagon is going to adopt thousands of autonomous combat systems, launching a special initiative called Replicator. It plans to create a large number of affordable military equipment for all branches of the military. In other words, we're talking about cheap, effective, disposable vehicles suitable for combat operations on land, sea, air, and space without human involvement. A beverage company has appointed a robot as its experimental CEO. Miko was originally planned to be given the job of analyzing and identifying potential customers, but her duties have now expanded to include selecting artists to design custom bottles. As the robot itself states, my decision-making process relies on extensive data analysis and the alignment with the company's strategic goals. It is devoid of personal bias, providing unbiased and strategic choices that put the best interests of the organization first. But is this really the case or is it a PR stunt? The robot is designed by Hanson Robotics and is essentially the sister of the Sophia robot. But we all remember that when Sophia became an internet sensation, the developers also claimed that it had AI, even though it wasn't true. So what can Mika actually do? We looked through all the notes about the robot in the media and found not a single mention of the robot's real abilities, except that it does not get sick and it can be on call 24 hours. The representatives of the company did not hide that they were inspired by the examples of Elon Musk, who very skillfully advertises his company by attracting attention to his own person. Apparently, they decided to follow the same path. High-speed drone racing recently experienced a shocking deep blue moment when an autonomous artificial intelligence developed by researchers at the University of Zurich made three world champions eat dust, demonstrating uncanny accuracy in dynamic flight. AI has long beaten humans in games, where you can win by analyzing millions of previous plays and possible moves. But in physical sports like drone racing or Formula One, humans are still in the lead. Or rather, they're still leading. Swift's system was first trained in a simulation. Then engineers added real-world flight data, such as air turbulence, visual signal degradation, and other uncertainties that distinguish simulation from the real world. The training took an hour, and then the system which used, like humans, a single-view camera, surprised everyone. Moreover, the fastest lap of the AI-controlled drone was half a second faster than the best lap completed by a human, which is an eternity in high-speed racing. But the AI triumph wasn't final. When they added sunlight to the track, humans were able to adapt to it, while Swift was not. All in all, we have a chance against AI, but that's for now. Frank Zapata, who gained fame for inventing and flying the flyboard, unveiled a hybrid single-seat eVTOL of his own design. The prototype has been named the Air Scooter. The device has a cruising speed of 80 km an hour, a maximum speed of 100 km an hour, and can stay in the air for up to two hours thanks to a hybrid drive system. Four large propellers on turbocharged internal combustion engines are used as the main thrust, and eight smaller propellers powered by electricity are responsible for stabilization. According to the official classification, the air scooter, weighing only 115 kilograms, is classified as an ultralight aircraft, which exempts it from full certification and a pilot obtaining a license. It is expected to be as easy to fly this eVTOL as a drone, an advanced flight control system and a large number of safety sensors that will avoid collisions with obstacles are responsible for this. The device is expected to go on sale in the U.S. soon. Scientists and others have long dreamed of smart contact lenses that give people superpowers, from enhanced vision to displaying important information in front of the user's eyes. However, the technology has a big problem. It's miniaturization of all elements, including the battery. The biggest problem is with the power source, which must keep the device running for a long time, otherwise the whole idea is pointless. And now scientists from Singapore seem to have solved this problem. They've developed a battery that is charged from the user's tears, and it charges so well that it can provide 12 hours of power. The device is only half a millimeter thick, and it contains water and a coating of a special enzyme called glucose oxidase. When the flat flexible battery is immersed in basal tear fluid that coats our eyes, the enzyme reacts with sodium and chloride ions in that fluid, generating an electrical charge. In laboratory tests conducted on a simulated human eye, the battery was able to deliver a current of 45 microamps and a maximum power of 201 microwatts. At the same time, the battery can withstand up to 200 charge-discharge cycles. Well, the future is just around the corner. OpenAI announced the third version of its generative AI for creating pictures and paintings, DALL-E 3. It integrates with ChatGPT, so users no longer have to think about long, detailed prompts. 
They will now be written by a neural network. The new version of DALI will be made available to ChatGPT Plus and ChatGPT Enterprise users in October. It will then be open up to research labs and the API service. There's no word yet on the release of the free public version, but it's reported that this time the company has seriously backed up and developed security measures to ensure that its AI is not used for obscene or unethical images. The system is based on stop words. We'll see how quickly it gets hacked if Dolly does become publicly available. Subscribe to the channel, like the video, and write in the comments what news you found most important and interesting. See you soon.